The president's management agenda lists risk management as one of the steps in several of its cross-agency priority goals. The coronavirus has highlighted a need for planning for risks in government. Rafael Boris is president and CEO of the Homeland Security and Defense Business Council. He's former undersecretary for management at the Department of Homeland Security. Rafael, welcome. It's good to see you. What is your sense of how agencies have done on an individual basis and collectively across government in implementing risk management policies and procedures? Well, uh, good to be with you, Francis. Uh, you know, in many ways, uh, I haven't seen uh, a significant change over the last uh, uh, four or five years. Um, I think one of the struggles has been with the implementation of uh, enterprise risk management is to recognize that uh, it's a way of doing business. It's not just a program that gets implemented and gets assigned a responsibility uh, or also the, another challenge with enterprise risk management is many people view it as just a compliance program or business continuity program. Uh, so it really is a way of doing business. Uh, and the recognition that enterprise risk management is more of a philosophy of how you manage your organization, along with the tools and the, and the techniques that you use to be able to effectively manage the organization is the key. So, you know, the, the federal agencies have, have uh, uh, taken baby steps, uh, but they still need to continue to push forward and adopt a more holistic, a truly holistic form of enterprise risk management. When you use the word philosophy, that says culture to me, and the culture obviously is much more difficult to drive than policies and procedures, Raphael. How have you seen this worldview, this mindset change well in private sector organizations or within pieces of DHS when you were there or other, any other organization that you've looked at over time? Yeah, you know, as I've been talking about enterprise risk management over the last several years, uh, I continuously remind folks that it's as much a behavioral change uh, as it is anything else. Uh, the need to understand that you're uh, implementing a, 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 a system of beliefs that requires you to change how you think about uh, the way organizations run or, and are managed, uh, as well as recognizing the need to understand what are the risks the threats to the organization, whether it's a public or private sector organization, and how do you identify those? How do you develop mitigation plans to deal with those? And then ultimately, how do you manage that? And the challenge, uh, Francis, with so many organizations is uh, we have built organizations uh, to effectively run themselves in, as individual silos. This is just as true of the private sector as it is the public sector. Uh, so that's why I say it's, it's a behavioral change. Uh, you really have to sell it. You have to be able to explain to the leadership and to the rank and file why it's necessary to change the way that we think about uh, the things that affect the organization. Uh, you cannot isolate uh, risk in one part of an organization without it uh, touching all the other parts of the organization. So that's the real challenge. It's a behavioral challenge. You're right. It's a cultural behavioral change that needs to take place. I recall a conversation that we had back in my radio days when you were still at the agency and one of the issues that you told me then that you struggled with was helping people understand that it was okay to even consider risk. There's obviously a risk aversion um, uh, culture in the federal government and it's been that way for a number of years. What have you found between then and now is useful to help the rank and file people understand we recognize stuff's going to happen that we're going to have to manage and recognizing that we're going to have to manage manage it is the first step to being able to do so effectively. Yeah, you know, it, I think it required uh, giving people permission uh, to uh, admit that uh, not everything is going to work perfectly and that there are going to be challenges. Uh, you know, when I think back to my days at Homeland Security, or even whether it was uh, commercial entities or other public entities uh, uh, where uh, enterprise risk management was uh, discussed as a means to be able to improve their organization, uh, it was getting people to recognize that it was okay to say that this activity, this initiative, this program that we're gonna embark upon uh, may not succeed unless we identify those factors that contribute uh, to uh, 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 risk. Those contribute to the lack of success. Identify those, 
monitor those, measure activity, and then give people permission to say, okay, it's not going well. Uh, what can we do to get this program back on track? Uh, th that's the key thing, giving people permission uh, to say that everything has to be perfect. Uh, and also, you know, it was just as important having these conversations with the GAO and the IG here in the federal government uh, so that they understood that there were going to be times that we were going to come forward and say a program is at risk. Uh, we've identified what those risks are and what the threats are to the success of the program. We have in place a mitigation strategy, and we're going to begin to uh, actively both implement and monitor the success, the success of that. Uh, so uh, it's no longer your hair is on fire. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's go to Congress and uh, and, uh, and 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 plead. Uh, you know we need forgiveness, but no, let's get ahead of it and manage it. Less than thirty seconds, Raphael. What will you watch moving forward to see how agencies make progress in these areas? Well, you know, it starts with how people talk about it. Uh, again. If people talk about enterprise risk management solely as a compliance function or uh, really as a form of business continuity, uh, then that would concern me that we haven't uh, uh, changed uh, our mindset uh, about what this needs to be really as a, an approach to how we manage our organizations. So if people continue to compartmentalize it, uh, stick it away in the corner, that would concern me that uh, we still have a tough road ahead to get people to fully adopt enterprise risk management. Rafael Boris, thank you very much. It's great to have you back. Great to be with you, Francis. Thank you.